Hi, I'm Vicki Harp. I'm the PM Manager for the SQL Server Tools and Experiences team at Microsoft, and I'm going to see if I can show you 20 features of Azure Data Studio in only 20 minutes. All right, here we go. So my goal today is to see if I can show you 20 different features of Azure Data Studio in 20 minutes. Now, there's a lot of features that you can see that you need deeper dives, and some of those you'll be able to see elsewhere here at BITS. Uh, but I thought for those of you who are maybe taking a look at Azure Data Studio for the first time, it might be a little bit fun to just get a really quick tour of a lot of the different things you can do and then go look for a deeper dive into some of those things. So to begin with, this is Azure Data Studio. It's a cross-platform open source uh, editor for SQL Server and the rest of the Azure Data platform. Uh, you can use it on Mac, Windows, and Linux, and you can download it from the Microsoft uh, document site, and you can also also get it from GitHub. It is open source and it is based on VS Code. So uh, this is the Insiders Edition, which is the daily build, and you can also use the stable, which is released monthly with updates. Uh, this has been GA for about two years now as of uh, this fall, and uh, we look forward to making many more features in the months and years to come. So starting with feature number one, I'm going to demonstrate the command palette. This is an interesting and important thing to know about whenever you're working on Azure Data Studio. So I'm going to hit Control Shift P, and you're going to see this thing pop up here, which is a list of recently used commands and as well something that I can use to type. And so that will help me go into item number two, which is themes. So if I can type that, go color theme. And we can see here we're able to change the color theme. So if you prefer to have dark, if you prefer to have uh, maybe red or solarized, or if you would like to have something that's got uh, high contrast for, for visibility. You can pick all of that there, and you can also uh, download additional uh, features if you like. So I'm just going to go with the default light for now as I go on to feature number three. I'll go again to the command palette and go to keyboard shortcuts. So keyboard, open keyboard shortcuts. Now I could also have gotten there by clicking down here and going to keyboard shortcuts. So here is where you can go through and change what all of these things are. So I'm hitting Control Shift P uh, for Command Palette, but maybe I don't care for that. Maybe I can change it. I can change uh, all of these different things to be something more comfortable. You can also download extensions that change this out so that you can have it more akin to what you're used to in, say, SSMS. Uh, I'm using the default uh, key commands here but this is all uh, editable for you. So next thing that I want to show that's kind of more of a basic of, of the uh, product is the terminal. So we have an editor here. If I hit Control and then uh, the, I guess, tilde key, uh, I bring up here this command palette or this command terminal. So I can, uh, here I'm in PowerShell, I can change over to command by typing CMD, go to command. Uh, clear screen, you know, run my my commands, etc. And then I can actually add additional ones. So maybe I want a PowerShell one and a command shell both open at the same time to be working in those different languages. You can do that and you can access these as you're working, which is really convenient rather than tabbing out to another experience. You can uh, do PowerShell, you can do uh, the, you know, your local command, whether it's Bash or, or Windows, you can do uh, Python, you can do lots of different shell activities right here. So let's go to item number five, which is the connections view. So if I click here over here in this viewlets area, you can see I have a couple connections already registered for both SQL Server and PostgreSQL. So if I want to add a new connection, I go and pick the connection type. I can add the server, pick the authentication, etc. And so I can see my, my list of different connections here. And then once they're in there, uh, it's able possible for me to go and view them and browse through them, just as you might be familiar with with other tools. I'm able to go all the way down to the columns of particular tables. Uh, and from here, I can go and access uh, by right clicking different manageability options and lots of different other features that are related to that particular database or uh, server type. Going on to item number six, we have deployments. So let's say that you these are the ones you've got, but you'd like to deploy something new. So if I go up here to this dot, 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 hit new employ deployment, I have the option of deploying a number of different things. And this is a, a constantly shifting uh, list. We're uh, consistently adding more. But for example, I could choose SQL on Windows, a SQL container in instance, a big data cluster, and then going into our Azure Arc. Look for more of these uh, deployment experiences to land very soon. This will just take you through an easy wizard, which lets you deploy uh, the uh, data service of your choice. 
So getting into now that we've got these connections, what are we going to do with them? We'll go to number uh, seven, which is the query editor. So let me hit new query. So here we have our very traditional query editor. I'm going to do my select star from sys.databases. And you can see our little uh, extra uh, IntelliSense running along there. I'm going to run that. And you can see we've got the result set. I'm going to hide this for size. Uh, we can see our um, ability to export to CSV, Excel, JSON, save as XML, etc. So we've got uh, the good full featured traditional SQL editor there. Uh, with that, we do have the ability to uh, uh, use IntelliSense, which is our item number eight, which uh, you can see uh, as I'm typing along here, I get sys.databases. Uh, and then you also have the ability to use something called snippets. So let's say I want to do create, and here I've got this create, you know, SQL create database. So that, and it's going to let me say test database. And you can see this is a full snippet that already has some uh, SQL pre uh, created for you. These snippets are something that you can create for yourself. Again, go to your trusty command palette, go to snippets, and you can configure user snippets for the language of your choice. So you can say, I want to have uh, new snippets for, let's go down here to SQL, and then create whatever it is that you run frequently that you want to have kind of added to IntelliSense to help you get up and running quickly. So let's say that you have done some work here. Uh, one of the important things that you want to do in a, in a contemporary environment is source control it. So we do have Git integration right here. So you see I don't have an open uh, Git repository, so I'm going to initialize a new repository. And now it's got all of the files in my directory here that I've got. I've got my file list here. And now they're all uh, basically uh, been initialized as a Git repository. So if I go over here and pick any given uh, file, I can, let's say this blocking file, uh, I can see the changes are all showing up here um, and would be ready for me to pretty easily go and, and do my commits, pushes, pulls, branches, etc. So that's our, uh, our next feature there. So moving on from there, the um, query editor is, is very similar to what we're used to with uh, other tools like say SSMS. But uh, one of the real special sauces for Azure Data Studio is the ability also to use notebooks. So if I have this select star from sys.databases, let's say I want to add a little bit of uh, stuff here. I can say this shows a list of databases, do that, and then say This is a list of uh, objects. And again, select star from sys all objects. So if I run that, traditionally what would happen is I would have, you know, if I can control S save, I would save this as a SQL file. And then if I wanted to share this with someone, I would have to individually export each of these tables and then give them the combination of those three files. Here's my SQL file, here's CSV1, and here's CSV2. So what a notebook attempts to do is pull all of that together. So let me put these together and let me put a little go statement in here. Then I'm going to hit export as notebook. And you can see this is the notebook version of the same thing. I'm going to connect it over here to my same server. Uh, I'm going to edit this, make it look a little nicer. Say I'm going to make this be a heading or let's say databases list. This shows a list of databases. So we have this nice human readable uh, section up here, and then I've got my uh, executable code here. So if I run that, you have that code. If I run this, you've got this code. I can also hit run all uh, should I want to. And now when I save this as a notebook, when someone then opens it later, they get this entire experience all together. So um, still have those export options in here. You've still got uh, a lot of the functionality you would expect from the uh, query editor, including that IntelliSense, but you've got the ability to share it, source control it, and, and work with it in, in really a different and, and fairly contemporary way. We've got the ability for you to uh, you know, edit your markdown here, and uh, that will really help you to, you know, if I wanted to, to learn to do you know, 
bolds and, and italics and everything like that. That's all built in here for you. Uh, and so a lot of the workflows around Azure Data Studio are built around this concept of using these notebooks, which uh, has turned out to be very popular among our SQL users. So from notebooks are in the Jupyter parlance, um, they're related to uh, you know, this concept called a kernel. And then there's these uh, attached to locations. So here I've been using the SQL the kernel, but we've also got these other languages that's, that are supported. We've got Kusto, uh, PySpark, Spark, Python, and PowerShell. So you can choose the language that you're choosing to run in. And then uh, in the attached to case, in the case of something like SQL, this is the server where you would run it to run. Now, notebooks are an open source concept. And another open source concept that uh, is related to this is something called a Jupyter book, which is our feature number 12. So if I go over here to this, this is my list of notebooks. And you can see these are individual files I can click through. But if I wanted to have a large number of uh, notebooks kind of gathered together, similar to a OneNote experience, I would want to use something called a Jupyter book. So if I go back to my trusty command palette and put Jupyter books, you can see we're shipping with the SQL Server 2019 guide, which is both a useful guide and also a good way to see how Jupyter books work. So here we can see I've just opened this Jupyter book and it's sort of a, um, a chapter and and page version of things. So I can go to the welcome page. I can go to these different troubleshooters and I can run all of these. You can take these links. I can go previous and next on different pages and really work through um, maybe a larger troubleshooting guide without having to have everything in a super long notebook. So this is another concept that comes with Azure Data Studio and again comes from the open source world as well. So being open source, uh, one of the things that we really want to do is uh, enable users and, uh, and companies to edit uh, Azure Data Studio as they like. So one of the main things that we have to enable that is this extension marketplace. So through the extensions marketplace, where we have you know, something on, on the order of 60 uh, extensions available, uh, both Microsoft and external parties are able to make new functionality for Azure Data Studio and make it available to you. So we have a number of interesting extensions that we've shipped from Microsoft, and we have a number of interesting extensions from, from our partners, uh, and they're listed here, and I've got some that are installed. I've got some that are recommended. You can see I've got the ability to do central management servers. We've got uh, different things from our partners um, in, in the monitoring world, and we've got things like the support for different languages are built down here into the extension mechanism. So with the remainder of our time, I thought I'd show you a couple of the interesting extensions you might want to pull in to customize Azure Data Studio for the way that you use it. So the first one I wanted to show you is Sandance. So Sandance is a visualizer. Uh, let's see, I've got some license data here for dog licenses. So if I hit view in Sandance, this is a nice visualizing tool to let you go through your, your data. Let's let it load for a second here. So here I've got uh, some CSV data and I'm able to see here are all the different license types and you know maybe I'm not real happy with the way this is. So I'm gonna go over to say, I want to see uh, maybe a grid view of it. I want to view it by uh, color of dog. I want to facet it by license type. I want to go over here to a tree map. I want to group by, uh, color it by dog name. I want to, you know, really explore my data, you know, in different ways. So this is the Sandance Visualizer. It's one of our extensions. Uh, we also have support for additional data platforms in here. So if I go to Postgres, uh, one of the, let me save us some time, I've got it listed here, a Postgres SQL. So we have support for Postgres SQL. We're adding additional support for things like uh, Kusto. And so you're able to add that support in here. Uh, so here you can see I have a Postgres SQL instance and we're able to use notebooks with it, use the query editor, everything that you would with SQL Server, you're able to use with the other uh, data platforms. Uh, an important recent one that we've added is uh, SQL project support. So if I go down here to, uh, SQL Server 
I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Uh, we have, yeah, SQL database projects. So if you've been using SSDT for uh, uh, Visual Studio and you're using database projects to uh, source control and manage your schemas, uh, you're able to do that now in Azure Data Studio. So there's actually an entire session on that. Um, we have as well uh, the uh, ability to do DAC pack. So if I go to DAC pack, SQL Server DAC pack is listed here along with SQL schema compare. So even independent of using a database project, I can go over here and say, um, I want to use a dedicated application wizard and I can create a a DAC pack or a backpack from that given database, uh, just like this. So that's a popular feature as well. Uh, backup and restore is something that we actually ship as an extension. Um, and then that's something where I can just do my simple, you know, backup and restore experiences as you would expect. The reason that something as fundamental as backup and restore is shipped as an extension is because by shipping it as an extension, we're able to independently version that functionality separate from the rest of the uh, application. So if, for example, you have an environment where you're not doing backup and restore, you could remove it. But more likely the case is that you might have an out of band update to that functionality, like the backup restore functionality that came along separately from the rest of it. So that's kind of architecturally how it works, where even some of the things that you might consider really fundamental to the application, they're actually part of it. So among some of the other ones that we'll go into, and I'm just going to very quickly slide through them, is we do have the SQL Server Profiler. Uh, we also have the ability to do flat file imports, so I can do uh, import wizard. And then uh, the import wizard is very similar to what we have in, in SSMS, where you're able to actually uh, do kind of a two-click import from, uh, say, a flat file rather than having to go through the large SSIS window. And then the last thing that I want to demonstrate among these is what we call the, the DBA pack. Let me close this. Uh, admin pack for SQL Server. I know that's not it. That is not it either. I'm going to take a pause and see if we can edit there. And so finally, what I want to show you in our uh, feature number 20, if I've got it correct here, is that you are actually able to cross integrate with uh, SSMS. If you do have SSMS co-installed and you're on Windows, if I go to this properties windows here, uh, and we'll give it a second to load, it's actually gonna open the dialog from SSMS in Azure Data Studio. So you can see we've got kind of our old favorite experience from the uh, properties window from SSMS and it's available here in Azure Data Studio if you have the two uh, products installed together. So we've got lots more features than these 20. This is just kind of the ones that I wanted to show you in this very quick uh, session. So I encourage you to give Azure Data Studio a try. Just go to uh, the uh, uh, your favorite search engine, search Azure Data Studio, and you can download either Stable or Insiders and get started. If you've got any feedback for us, please let us know. Thanks so much.